by Mike Adolfs, and he will speak about how they ran support at GitHub. Have fun. All right, is this thing on? Yeah, you can hear me okay? Perfect, awesome. All right. Okay, we're starting a little early. It's not even uh, 2.30. <laughs> uh, hello, I'm Mike from GitHub. And uh, first, I would like to say thanks uh, for having me here today. I really appreciate the invite, and I'm glad to be able to speak here today. Uh, at GitHub, I spend most of my time working on technical support for the GitHub Enterprise product, uh, ranging from giving advice on Git workflows uh, to debugging and fixing issues with the appliance, uh, the appliance's underlying Linux operating system. And I'm also the team lead for the European Enterprise Support Team and work on release management for the GitHub Enterprise product. Um, a question at first. So who is currently working in a support position? One, two, three, four, five. Nice. And who has ever worked in a support position? OK, that's a bit more. Great. So I'm going to uh, tell you a little more about how we're running support today. So uh, that's pretty good. When I uh, first started writing the, the first draft for this talk, uh, I asked myself a simple question. Why should everyone in a company uh, should help out with support every once in a while? And by the end of the talk, we will have answered that particular question. Though the question you've had in mind when browsing the conference program was probably this one. Why on earth is someone talking about support at the Open Source Data Center conference? <laughs> uh, hopefully, by the end of the talk, you'll realize that there's a reason for why I'm here today. Before we dive into support, let me tell you a few things about GitHub real quick, because talking about GitHub is always interesting. <laughs> uh, GitHub is a hosting company for software development projects uh, that was founded six years ago. Our core products are github.com and GitHub Enterprise, the on-premise version of github.com that you can install on a virtual server in your own or in your company's data center. That's at least what the Wiki Wikipedia says. Of course, we're also a little more than just another hosting company. We offer Git training worldwide, online or on-site. We sponsor events or host drink and tea ups to connect with uh, local communities. We have our very own YouTube channel teaching you all things Git. We speak on conferences about how we run the company. And we also have recently released a new editor called Adam. Um, if you haven't received an invite for the beta by now, uh, you can hit me up at mike at github.com and uh, I'll hook you up. Our HQ is uh, based in lovely San Francisco in the popular uh, Soma district, south of Market Street. But we are generally a company that works remote for, yeah, remotely for most of the time. In my team, for instance, there's not a single person living in the Bay Area. This is what it's currently looked like. Today, there are 244 GitHubers spread, spread across 113 cities pretty much all around the globe. So you can see we have someone in Hawaii, a lot of people in North America. Um, there's a cluster in Europe, in Asia, in, in Australia, and also in Africa. We get work done from home offices, co-working spaces, coffee shops, airports, from underway, uh, from conferences, pretty much from anywhere. As long as there's decent Wi-Fi or 3G, uh, 3G coverage, we are pretty much available and, and ready to go. On a side note, even the people living in the Bay Area, they're not absolutely not required to uh, come into the office on a daily basis. That's what they usually do, but it's not, not a requirement. It's in, yeah, it's pretty much their own decision where to work from. You'll often hear that uh, we have no management at GitHub, and that is simply not true. 
Instead, everyone's helping out with managing the company, ranging from hiring over giving feedback to teammates and also to interacting with our customers. We have no policies regarding working hours or vacations and there are also no bosses you have to report to. The whole company is based on trust and we expect everyone to make the best possible decision at all times. But of course, there is leadership. Uh, people who are responsible for certain parts uh, or certain products um, yeah, developed by the company. In a nutshell, you can say you build it and you own it. Uh, whether that is a product, whether that is a team or a team of teams or something entirely different. Because everyone deserves some face time every once in a while, we all gather in one place at least once a year for our annual internal conference, better known as Summit. Then we're going out for dinner to get to know each other a little better or enjoy watching a Giants game in the AT&T ballpark. And in the evening we start jamming, head out for karaoke or simply sit together at a bar to talk the night away. Ultimately, you can say that our mission is to make it easier to work together than to work alone, regardless of whether you're sitting next to each other or thousands of miles away. That is what drives our company. So, <laughs> what brought me to support? Uh, after all, I've always been a diehard system operations guy, uh, spending most of my time on building and automating server landscapes um, or implementing monitoring for other things. Uh, before I've joined uh, GitHub one and a half years ago, I've been working for a small startup called Nugget uh, in Berlin. They've made an exit to the Deutsche Post around yeah, four years ago, five years ago maybe. Um, and after Nugget, I've joined Zing in Hamburg and was also working for them for pretty much three years. And when I've told my former co-workers at Zing that I've accepted a support gig at GitHub, directly interacting with uh, end users for the most part of the day, most of, most of them ask exactly one question. Why? <laughs> Here's why. So part of the reason why I ended up saying yes to a support gig is because support is much older than any other job in the computer business. It's as old as humans sell things to each other. Remember these conversations you've had with the cave troll next to you? Yo, dog, that hand axe I bought from you yesterday literally just broke on first usage. Make me a new one. A couple of... 100,000 years later, things became more interesting when we started to open up stores for the very first time. Stores that people returned to to get their broken tools fixed. Unfortunately, due to the invention of the mall, these stores are a thing of the past. That said, if you need a reminder of how these stores worked back then, you can simply boot up Skyrim or pretty much any other computer role-playing game available on the market. However, the thing about stores was that you still had to go back to the shop every once in a while to get your broken tool fixed, right? That's why, or maybe that's not why, but um, that's good coincidence. In 1876, the telephone got invented. In 1894, the switchboard got invented allowing us to create agencies connecting people on the phone. And that pretty much brought yeah, things to a whole new level. The adoption rate of the telephone in the 20th century made it a lot easier to receive and provide support on the phone. Unfortunately, then there were several decades when people had to worry about more important things than to how optimize phone support. But in the 1960s, we were able to revisit phone support and decided that it was a good idea to industrialize it by inventing the call center. 
we started putting people into cubicles and let them talk to the customer on the phone all day long. As an aside, I absolutely love how they've turned on all the screens just to put this picture on the internet. <laughs> Anyhow, this picture is, is pretty much the perfect example for why many people think that working in support is an entry-level job or generally a bad idea, and this just has to end, because it really is neither of those. Support is not like working on an assembly line. Uh, you're not performing the same steps over and over again each day. Support is more about like firefighting with a small and highly trained team eager to learn new things when required and enabling the user to get back to work as soon as possible. And by the way, this uh, does not only apply to technical support. Uh, this also applies to other fields like account support, for instance, solving people problems, so to speak. Account support may not require such in-depth technical knowledge, but instead it requires excellent people skills. Since when people problems arise, uh, like a blocked user account, for instance, uh, the communication part is usually the one that is most important. So, how do we run support at GitHub, actually? We have 26 people sitting all over the world in all major time zones providing support for our users. And we separate between support for github.com and support for GitHub Enterprise. Not because it makes the most sense, but mainly due to historical reasons. In the future, we would like to see both teams to collaborate a little more. And presumably, one day in the not-too-distant future, we might end up merging ourselves into a single team. The .com team provides support for github.com and all of our native clients. That means technical support for Git repositories or the API, for instance, but also account support or incident, incident management in case uh, things went horribly wrong. The enterprise support team, on the other hand, takes care of GitHub Enterprise only, and that is mainly due to the product's complexity, uh, but also because we have to take over on-call shifts as we allow our users, our enterprise users, to escalate tickets if needed. Like when there's a Git repository that got corrupted for some reason, uh, or a VM that doesn't boot up anymore, then our users can escalate these issues to page us, and we get back to them within several minutes. It's pretty much the same as system administrators on call duties. Both teams don't separate between free, evaluating, or paying customers. Um, there's no priority queue. Everyone is treated in the same way at GitHub. We also don't make it hard to contact a human, like other companies do by guiding you through a gazillion of knowledge base articles before finally routing you to a contact form. That just doesn't happen at GitHub. When you reach out to support at GitHub, your inquiry will land in one central, in one central inbox. And a human then takes a look at your email and push it, pushes it forward to a more specialized inbox where it then gets answered or processed, maybe not answered in the first place, but then people take care of getting the issue resolved. This approach has a couple of benefits. Uh, it allows everyone in the company to gain insights on a more global scale what's going on at GitHub. And it also allows us to easily prioritize certain types of issues like, like an organization that just filed, in, filed, in, filed a ticket um, because they can't log in anymore. And since there's not only one hubber, but many, um, it's pretty safe that nothing gets lost or heavily delayed in answering. 
We also have in common that most people on the support teams at GitHub uh, commit to the various projects um, on a regular basis. If there's a bug we can fix by ourselves, we'll usually just write this up as an issue, um, file a pull request and ask for a review before it gets merged into master. If there's time, we also start hacking on side projects or work on new features together with the other engineers. This, for instance, is a contributions graph representing commits, issues, and pull requests from one of the uh, support engineers on my team. And every square represents uh, a single day, and the different shades of green represent the amount of actions tracked. So you can see there's, there's always um, a little time besides answering tickets that you can invest in, in uh, doing something different. This is another contributions graph showing this even better. Um, this is also from one of the engineers on my team. And yeah, you can see, cl clearly see that uh, if the team's doing a good job, and it is, um, everyone's able to put aside weeks of time to entirely focus on side projects and to ignore tickets for a while. There are other teams regularly working on support exactly like the full-time support engineers. Um, and most notably, that is our excellent ops team. When they chime in on tickets, it's usually about restoring deleted repositories for users uh, who've made the wrong decision to delete them in the first place. <laughs> um, sometimes it's about debugging various connection issues like I'm on at and and I can't connect to GitHub. What's wrong? So, and then our operations team jumps in and tries to debug that. It's also not only our operations team helping out, it's also about the developers. Um, for instance, there's one of our developers, uh, his name is Rick Olson, better known as Technoweenie. And when he shipped avatar support a few weeks ago, uh, so that people don't have to register, register for a, a WordPress.com account anymore in order to use Gravatar. He also jumped in to help out with incoming support requests. A few days later, he posted an update with a few statistics and a thank you note for our support engineers on Team. Um, team is sort of like GitHub's very own social network, only for employees. And it says, it says Huge props to the GitHub supporter cats. Avatars had a gnarly caching issue that generated a fair number of support requests. I also got to work with a bunch of new hubbers I haven't worked with before, so that's always fun. On certain occasions, like popular holidays, when most people want to spend time with their loved ones, um, or also for our in annual internal conference, the support team can do the bad signal. <laughs> that is sort of like the big, oh shit, please help button. Uh, that'll result in all the people at GitHub helping out with uh, support. Then it's not just us anymore, the support team answering tickets. It is everybody at GitHub. Allowing the support people to take part in the company's cultural life and activities without stopping to make our users happy because support just never stops. It doesn't really matter whether it's Independence Day, whether it's New Year's Eve or my birthday, uh, people won't just stop asking questions. We also run support with a few core principles in mind. The first rule is never get into a fight. Sometimes people are angry for whatever reason, um, and getting into a fight with them just is not going to help anybody. Number two is don't insult your users. Essentially, never bite the hand that feeds you. 
This goes along with the fact that we also don't make fun of our user base. So no matter how crazy uh, people's questions are, our internal discussions usually happen on a such a such a professional level that from the communications point of view alone, I wouldn't be afraid of giving our users access to those internal conversations. The third one is um, no excuses. Don't overuse I'm sorry. If, uh, of course, if we have messed things up, like taking the site down for half a day uh, or not fixing a bug in Enterprise as soon as possible, of course we do apologize. Um, that's a no-brainer. It's more about not apologizing to our users all day long for literally no reason. Like when people file feature requests, for instance, if we've discussed a particular feature request already and decided not to add the feature to the product, we don't say, oh, I'm sorry that we haven't implemented this yet. There's usually a very good reason for not implementing certain features into GitHub. Thus, there's also no real reason for an excuse. Number four, no superpowers. Uh, don't pretend to know everything. Instead, be open and honest and tell your users that you simply don't know, but that you will learn and investigate or ask other hubbers for help to get the issue resolved. These days, knowing everything is just not possible anymore, and everything who think he does should ask for a reality check. Uh, these days, it's pretty much all about teamwork. And the last one, avoid advertising verbiage. Advertising new products in a support position or in a support conversation is usually a no-no. You have to focus on the solution and bringing another product into play uh, is usually not helping any further. And by the way, we also never advertise our products as better as CVS or Subversion. Um, and we also don't tell people join GitHub. It's free. <laughs> Uh, there are very good reasons to join GitHub, but that it's f mostly free isn't one of them. To round this all up, be a human and be nice. And if you can't be nice on that day when you have to answer that ticket for some reason, just hand it over to somebody else. Uh, you know, because we all have these days when we're grumpy and rather want to leave this planet. That's just human. These uh, five principles I've just told you about eventually result in happier users, or as we call them, superfans. And the following example is a short conversation between one of our users and Paul Betts, a GitHub developing software on our native clients team. So the user reported totally loving what you did with the Windows client and been loyally using it since it came out. But does it really need to take up 2.5 gigabytes of space? Two hours later, Paul responded the following. That is totally not cool and not expected. Can you tell us specifically which folders are taking up so much space? And another couple of minutes later, the user got back to us. As soon as I get back home, I'll send you the juicy details. That'll happen tomorrow. I must say, I'm positive, positively surprised by your responsiveness. Thought it would take a day or two at the least for any reply to arrive. Ultimately, we filed that as an issue, got it fixed and re released a new version quickly. And because Paul interacts with the code base on a daily basis, he was able to get it fixed quickly. Can you imagine how long it would have taken to get this resolved if we were running support in a more traditional way, like triaging the ticket first, asking the user to reinstall the client, deleting the cache, yeah, basically on and on and on. So by interfacing Paul with the, with the user, uh, we've yeah, had great improvements of, of speed to get it resolved. 
I have also another more operations-oriented example in which a user reported connectivity issues from Microsoft Cloud Platform. In this case, the user said, we're starting to experience increasingly frequent connectivity errors from our Microsoft Azure virtual machine to GitHub. We get a connection error a majority of the time. And it was pretty clear right from the start that this needs some serious debugging. And so Jesse Newland, uh, our operations lead, jumped in to help out and contact contacted Microsoft during that process. As this is an issue from only a few days ago, and due to its sporadic nature, even after exchanging trace routes and PCAP files, we weren't able to get this resolved uh, yet. That said, the Microsoft engineers' responses are one of the best I've ever seen. And here's an extract from their latest reply. As the plan currently stands, any customer reporting this problem will be di directed to open a new case with Microsoft, but to reference case, case number. This will allow us to coordinate the work on both sides until we, we can figure this out. We will still work with individual customers until we have a solid reproduction, but we will also keep the master case updated with the associated cases and any specific findings. P.S. When I'm back in the office on Monday, let's talk about how we can manage, manage the inv individual cases that come in. The cool thing about it is um, that the entire conversation was completely transparent to the user having these problems. And although the issue hasn't f been fixed yet, um, it's definitely a great user experience for, for this guy um, because he was able to see how the operations team and the Microsoft support team interacted with each other. So this is essentially how you turn people into superfans. Other examples are when we help people to fix Git repositories that got corrupted for some reason, or when they've ran into trouble with the enterprise VM. In this tweet, Joachim said, just had a major Git crisis at work. Thankfully, GitHub Enterprise support followed up and helped us sort it out, worth every penny. Dan said, or put it on Twitter, it needs to be said again. GitHub Enterprise support people are amazing. When you're in a pinch and need help, they deliver. I can stress enough how rewarding that is to see people tweeting about the support experience they've just had. Um, that constant and sometimes also, like in this case, public feedback loop is one of the most rewarding aspects uh, when working in support jobs. And it's also one of the things you will probably enjoy the most because everyone deserves a pat on the shoulder from time to time. So let's answer the question already. Why help out? Here's why. Helping out uh, with support will result in more stable services, regardless whether it's, a soft whether it's software or, inf or infrastructure. Long-standing bugs usually get squashed faster once you've seen firsthand how a bug affects the user's product experience, like in the example with Paul and with Paul and our uh, Windows client taking up too much space. It also provides valuable insights on different levels. Ever wondered how the product or uh, a service performance um, you're working on look from the user's perspective? Helping out with support will let you find out. And no, a monitoring tool's checks aren't quite like first-hand experience. How's your company's reputation? Rest assured, you'll learn about that too. There are also learnings to take away um, that have applications outside of support, like one dish in the sink at a time. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, support helps you to learn to focus on issues and then you make up your mind on how to get these resolved and 
that is something that will come in handy when orchestrating server updates or when writing code. Pretty much in any situation, you have to apply some, yeah, some kind of focus. Um, focus on one thing and get it right, then go next to the other. Helping out in support also acts as a great reminder whom you're actually working for. And that'll provide you with uh, another perspective when it comes to implementing new features, like does it really make sense to add 10 more fields to our sign-up page for the user's address and shit? <laughs> I know that's a little exaggerated and a little too focused on development work, but you've probably got the gist of it. It applies in pretty much the same way for administration work as well. Like when moving servers from one data center to the other, do we really have to schedule a downtime for this? For the things we have to learn before we can do them, we learn by doing them. On a more personal level, when working in support, you're constantly forced to learn new things and mainly learn them by doing. So there's a user waiting for a reply. You can't just slack off and, and call it a day. You have to read up on maybe Unicorn's, Unicorn's internals or Azure Nexus documentation or whatever. Um, this is pretty much what, what you have to do right away if you're, if you're stuck with uh, debugging an issue. This can also get tiresome from time to time, and that's also the reason why full-time support people have to step back from answering tickets every now and then. Um, but as an administrator or developer helping out, um, you will probably enjoy that. Ultimately, on a personal level, you will have lots and lots of opportunities to practice empathy. Empathy is the experience of understanding another person's condition from their perspective. Chad Fowler recently blogged that empathy is the most important skill you can practice. It will lead to greater success personally and professionally and will allow you to become happier the more you practice. And support is pretty much the perfect place to level up empathy due to the many different people you're interacting with. And it turned me personally from a constantly complaining sysadmin into a socializing friendly human being. So to round it all up, uh, you should help out with support every now and then at your company. It's definitely not an entry level job and a really great way to connect with your users and also uh, with other teams at your company. All right, that's it. Thank you for your time. Any questions? Um. Okay. Thanks. Um. Okay. Do you think uh, the way you work and the way you do support at uh, GitHub is, is transferable to other companies where there are many more people working there? There are many more people in development, apps, ops, and support, and many more. Pro different products because it seems you have you were more or less focused on one or one I don't know one or two products two, two. yeah and it's a relatively small group working together do you think it is transferable to like companies with uh, thousands of uh, people working in it and dozens of products so first of all we have around 5 million users on github.com. And we also have a couple of thousand enterprise customers. Um, and even, so I, I would say we're kind of short on support people right now. Um, and we're hiring support people. So I think we're able to, to scale that to at least a certain, to a certain extent. Um, I'm not sure if you would be able to implement some kind of uh, system like this um, easily in an already established business. Um, I haven't seen this yet happening, but um, 
Working at GitHub is mostly about freedom, and there are definitely small steps that you can take to allow people to, yeah, basically to, to enjoy more freedom in their work life. In the back, there's one. Uh, so you said that, um, or did I understand correctly, that you're only doing remote support, right? You're not doing any on-site support? That kind of depends. Um, if I decide that it's a good idea to visit a customer, I'm just doing that. Um, I don't have to ask anybody um, for permission to do that, by the, uh, for instance. But um, we're mostly doing email support, and in cases where things are getting really complicated, we are also calling back our customers. Like when there's a VM that crashed and crashed hard and doesn't boot up anymore, um, and the system administrator or the developer on the other side asks for a conference call, we just hop on them and talk to them in, in real time. Uh -huh. And um, <clears throat> so that would have been my next question, if you're only using email for that. Um, and if you are, if you're mostly using email for that, and how are you organizing that? I mean, you can have, you can have like a ticketing system, uh, stuff like that. Maybe even using your own GitHub issues uh, system. Because for me, the interesting question always is how much of structure you're bringing into that. So if you have like a, a huge Jira installation with stupid workflows and stuff like that, if you try to keep it like really simple, just an assignee, uh, if at all assignees. Uh, or or how, how are you organizing like the, the ticket sharing and who's doing what and stuff like that? That would be interesting. So we definitely kept it simple uh, because we developed our own uh, help desk software. <laughs> and that works pretty much um, in, the, in the way we want it to work. Um, there's the thing that the enterprise support team currently uses Zendesk. Um, but we are in the process of migrating over to our own help desk that is already in use by github.com. And the reason that we are only provide email support is not only because it gets tiresome to pick up the phone every now and then, <laughs> um, but also because providing people with uh, specific instructions to run certain commands from the command line, um, giving them via phone just doesn't scale. Like imagine to tell someone to curl minus x post minus h authorization header uh, colon, then an MD5 sum, and that's that's just not going to work. All right. More questions. Do we have any further questions? Okay. Then thank you, Mike. Awesome, thanks.